Good morning, church. It's great to have you with us this morning and looking forward to a great morning as we worship together. Just a quick announcement as we begin this morning. We have uh, begun an online prayer meeting on Wednesday evenings from 7 till 8 o'clock. We would love to have you join us. You simply download the Zoom app onto your phone or your tablet or your computer. And then I send out a link this week and that link, you'll just click on it. It'll bring you right on to the app and uh, will allow you to join us with a video conference. We start off with a bit of a devotional together and then spend some time in prayer together, specifically praying for uh, this pandemic that we're in, as well as other needs that we know of within our church family. So I hope that you can join us uh, this coming Wednesday from 7 till 8 o'clock. Now Mackenzie has an announcement, and so I'm going to turn it over to her to make an announcement on behalf of our youth. All right, so this is just a message for our youth. So we are going to be starting online youth through an app called Zoom. So our first youth event is going to be taking place on Friday, April 3rd, from about 7 till 8 or 8.30. So we sent out our intro video links uh, yesterday to all of our families. So hopefully you saw the video. Know the four questions we want you to be thinking about this week. So we're gonna be meeting on Friday. I will be sending links out to your emails so that you can log on to the Zoom. And we are going to be doing a short devotional and a game next Friday. So we are going to be meeting at 7 o'clock, April 3rd, online. And we're super excited for what this has in store for us. So we hope you can join us. This morning as we begin our worship, listen to these words found in Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God, it is he who made us, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever, and his faithfulness continues through all generations. We've come to worship this morning, and I hope that as we do that together, that you will just really sense and feel the Lord's presence as we worship him this morning. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God. Still 
time to worship Come, now is the time to give your heart Come, just as you are to Just as you are before your God, come, come, come.
Today's scripture reading is taken from Mark 6, verses 30 to 44. The apostles gathered around Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said, and it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, that would take more than a half year than half a year's wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. When they found out, they said, five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to the heavens, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up twelve basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of the men who had eaten that day was 5,000. My message this morning is taken from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 8 through 23. And my message is entitled this morning, Feeding on Our Faith and Not on Our Fears. You know, from time to time, horrific things happen to us in our lives. And when those things happen, it oftentimes will stop us right in our tracks. And sometimes it makes us think of God, and sometimes it makes us think of eternity. I know that God often has to use many different means to sometimes grab our attention. Uh, I'm not saying that God causes bad things to happen to us, but I'm saying that God uses the situations that we face from time to time to speak to us. I believe that God is speaking to his church today. You know, this COVID virus is nothing new. Viruses are not new. Viruses have been around forever. Some are more treatable. Some are more controllable. Um, this particular virus, I think uh, God is using this time to speak to his church. And I believe that he has some things that he wants to say to us. I think sometimes we think we're invincible and we're not. And we just need to know and rely on the fact that God has a plan and that he's using sometimes these situations to teach us some lessons and to speak to us. How many of you have ever felt in your life like you've got enough faith? You, have, you don't need any more. You're good to go. You've got all that you need. 
I know that I can't say that. And I don't think any of us, if we're being really honest, can say that we have enough faith all of the time. From time to time, I think we feel like we, we need to grow in our faith. We need more faith. Sometimes we lack in our faith. And I think it doesn't matter whether you've been a Christian for 50 years, 60 years, or however many years. I think there are times in our lives, more than, more than uh, not, where we really need more faith. I want you to know today that there's good news for you. That faith is available to us and we can get more faith. In Romans chapter 10 verse 17, it, it tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing comes through the word of God. This morning, I want you to understand that how we grow in our faith, how we become stronger in our faith, is the time that we spend in reading the Word of God. And so, as we go through this this morning, we're going to be looking at some ways in which we can strengthen our faith, and we're going to look at how God uses different situations in our lives. In today's story about Elisha, God gives us, I think, what we're going to call three realities that will feed our faith, that will help us to strengthen our faith. The first reality that we see in this story of Elisha is that God use it, he use it, he, God's, we, we see God's unwavering attention. Uh, we all get attention from God. God always is paying attention to us. He cares for us. He looks after us. Um, and, and so God, we, we get co constant attention from God, just like ki the king of Syria got in these verses in 8 to 12 of this passage of scripture. Let's, let's listen to the story, beginning with verse 8. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel, he would confer with his officers and say, we will mobilize our forces at such and such a place. But immediately Elisha, the man of God, would warn the king of Israel, do not go near that place, for the Arameans are planning to mobilize their troops there. So the king of Israel would send word to the palace, or to the place indicated by the man of God. And time and again, Elisha would warn the king, so that he would not, or so that he would be on alert there. The king of Aram became very upset over this and he called his officers together and he demanded, which one of you is the traitor, he said, who has been informing the king of Israel of all of my plans? It is not us, my lord and king, one of the officers replied. Elisha the prophet, though, in Israel, he's been telling the king of Israel even the words that you have been speaking in the privacy of your bedroom. Wow. You know, we see in this passage of scripture how God speaks and how he gives his unwavering attention through the prophet Elisha. He tells the king of Israel exactly where this Aramean army is going to be. This in turn protects the king of Israel from walking into one of the Aramean traps. This, I think, should also give us some great comfort today in our own lives God knows everything that is going on in our lives today. He knows all about COVID-19 and how this virus is affecting us. He knows whether or not you have lost your job today. He knows whether or not you have had to shut down your business today because of this virus. This was bad news for the king of Syria because it wasn't Elisha in the bedroom listening to the king, but rather it was God himself. You see, God's attention in this situation was bad news for the king of Syria. And it's bad news for anybody who decides not to listen to and decides to rebel against God. I think sometimes people think that nobody's watching them. Nobody's seeing me. I'm in the privacy of my home. I'm in the privacy of my office. I'm in my car. Nobody sees what I'm doing. But I want to tell you this morning that God sees it all. God knows it all. But the Lord's good, at good attention that he has for us is good news for children of God. It is good news if you are a servant of God like Elisha. You see, here's a word of encouragement for you today. The Lord is never surprised by what is going on around you. <clears throat> 
He never turns away. He, ne he is never caught off guard. You see, the Lord is always tuned in to your life. He is tuned into your thoughts. He's tuned into your needs. He's tuned into your fears. He's turned, tuned into all of your problems. He knows everything that is going on in your life. He is, he is this coronavirus, this is no surprise to God. God knows all about it. He's doing a great work in the midst of all that is happening in our world today. You know, there's an interesting passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 10, verse 30, where Jesus is talking to his followers and he's talking about how God cares for us and, and how God pays attention to us. And he says in that verse, he says, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. <laughs> Now, I know that some of you are sitting there today looking at me and saying, well, pastor, that does not take much for God to count the hairs on your head. And you're right. It's a pretty small task for me. But for some of you, that's a major miracle that he knows all the hairs on your head and how many you have. That's paying attention. God is paying close attention to each one of our lives. He loves you. He cares about you and what happens to you in your everyday life. God is always paying attention to us. It may not seem like it at times because often we're not paying attention to him. You know, I think sometimes we think God has moved away from us and, and has forgotten about us. But what I have found many times is that it's often not God that has moved. It's often me who has moved. But God is always focused upon us because he cares so much about us. And God proves that he cares for us by paying attention to each one of our lives and all that is going on in our lives. In the midst of this coronavirus that we find ourselves in today, this pandemic, I want you to know and I want you to remember just how much God loves you and how much he is in control of this situation in your life today. Even when we feel alone like God has forgotten us, I can assure you, he has not forgotten us. The scriptures tell us that, that, that God is there for us, that he will never leave us, that he will never forsake us. And so in these days of turmoil, in these days of uncertainty, I would challenge you to feed your faith on God's unwavering attention in your life. He is there. So feed your faith by remembering the promises that we find in the word of God and how they apply to each one of our lives. The second reality that we see in this passage of scripture is our unseen allies. We certainly need allies in our lives from time to time. I mean, we're going to be under attack at different times in our lives. And we see an example of this in, chapter, in, this, in this chapter, uh, beginning with verse 13 through 15, where the king of Syria was trying to attack or trying to capture the prophet Elisha because he didn't like how Elisha was able to tell the king of Israel where he was going, where the uh, Armenian army was going to be. Let's listen. Let's be, pick it up at verse 13. Go and find out where he is, where Elisha is, the king commanded, so that I can send troops out to seize him. And the report came back to, the, to him that said, Elisha is at Dothan. So one night the king of Aram sent a great army with many chariots and horses, and they surrounded the city of Dothan. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, all he could see on the hills were these troops and these horses and all of these chariots everywhere. And he said to Elisha, he said, oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried out to Elisha. You see, the enemy that day had surrounded Elisha there in, Doth in Dothan. And when Elisha's servant went outside that morning and he looked out on the hills, all that he could see were the troops and the horses and all the chariots. They were everywhere. I want to tell you today, there are going to be times in each one of our lives where the enemy is also surrounding us and where we're going to feel like we're under attack and that the enemy is just waiting to attack us. What does that look like for us? Well, 
Sometimes that enemy can surround us, that surrounds us is our, is the enemy is coming down on our, on our health or it's on our finances or it's on our relationships. You see, the enemy can surround us with things like stress and threats and frustrations and all kinds of ungodly influences. You know, I think that there are many today that would say that this coronavirus that we are finding ourselves in, this pandemic, is just another enemy that is surrounding us. In big ways and in small ways, the enemy will surround us from time to time. But here's the thing that I want you to remember this morning. We are not alone in the battle. Amen? I mean, we have great and unseen allies that are right at our side that are caring for us. God word, God's word reveals them to us in verses 15 through 18. Let's read verse 15 again and down through 18. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and he went outside, there were troops and horses and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. This is what Elisha said to his servant. He said, don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed. He said, O Lord, open the eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young servant's eyes, and when he looked up, all he saw on the hillside that surrounded Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. As the Aramean army advanced towards them, Elisha began to pray again. And he said, O oh Lord, please strike this army and make them blind. And so the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha had just asked. You know, one of the biggest or one of the best things about being in the family of God is that we are surrounded by people who love us and care about us, people who encourage us, people who pray for us and help us whenever they can. I know that there are many who are praying for each other today and during these days when we can't meet together. And I know that many of you are looking after each other by calling one another, and I have so appreciate that. But during these days when this pandemic is spreading like wildfire, we must not forget that God has not left us. We must never forget that as believers, we have unseen allies on our side, allies like the angels that are talked about in verse 17. I read a story recently about a missionary, and I'd like to share that story with you this morning. This was a, a missionary who was uh, working in Africa. A missionary was serving as a medic at a small field hospital in Africa. Periodically, he had to travel by bicycle through the jungle to a nearby city for supplies. It was a two-day trip, and so he, made, he, made, he had to camp overnight ha halfway. He had, made several, he had made this trip several times without incident. But one day, however, he arrived at his destination and he saw two men fighting. One was seriously hurt, and so he treated him, and he witnessed to him and went about his business. Upon arriving in the city again several weeks later, he was approached by the man that he had treated earlier. He said, I know that you carry money and that you carry medicine with you, and that he said to the missionary, some friends and I followed you into the jungle the night that you treated me knowing that you would camp overnight and we waited for you to go to sleep and then we planned to kill you and to take your money and all of your drugs. Just as we started moving into the campsite, we saw that you were surrounded by 26 armed guards. There were only six of us and we knew that we couldn't possibly get near you, so we left. Well, hearing this story, the missionary began to laugh and he said, that is impossible. I can assure you I was alone in that campsite that night. The young man pressed his point. He said, no, sir, I was not the only one to see the guards. He said, my friends also saw them and we counted them. He said, we were so frightened that we it was that we were so frightened it was because of those guards that we left you alone and we didn't attack you 
Several months later, the missionary attended a church presentation uh, where he was giving a presentation in Michigan where he told about this experience in Africa. One of the congregants jumped to his feet and he interrupted the missionary and he said something that left everyone in the church totally stunned. He said, we were with, he said, we were with you in spirit, said the man. The missionary looked kind of perplexed. He, the man continued, on that night in Africa, it was morning here. I stopped at the church to gather some materials for an out-of-town trip to another church. But as I put my bags into the trunk, I felt the Lord leading me to pray for you. The urging was so great that I called the men of the church together to pray for you. Then the man turned around and he said to everybody in the congregation, he said, the, will those men who met with the Lord that morning and prayed for this missionary please stand up? One by one, they all stood, all 26 of them. Think about this. This missionary had his own group of 26 angels watching out for him that day in the jungle in Africa. I want to tell you this morning, I believe that God sends angels to watch over us from time to time. You see, angels are our unseen allies. They are sent by God as his servants. But our greatest unseen ally is God himself. You see, in the midst of all that you are facing right now in your life, God is our ally and he is right there with us. He is the one who is listen he is the one who listened to the king of Syria plotting against Israel. The Lord God himself is the one who answers answers prayers like the prayers that he answered for Elisha that Elisha prayed that day when he prayed that the God, that God would strike the army with blindness and he did just that. I want to tell you this morning and encourage you this morning that God is your unseen ally and he is right there with you no matter what you're going through today. The third reality that we see is our undeserved mercy. Let's pick it up at verse 18. As the Aramean army advanced towards him, Elisha prayed, O Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Then Elisha went out and he told them, you have come the wrong way. This isn't the city. Follow me and I will take you to where the man is that you are looking for. And he led them to the, led them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, O Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. And so the Lord opened their eyes and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted to Elisha, My father, should I kill them? Should I kill them? Of course not, Elisha replied. Do we kill prisoners of war? Give them food and drink and then send them on their way back to their master. And so the king made a great feast for them and then he sent them home to their master. After that, the Aramean raiders stayed away from the land of Israel. You see, those Syrian soldiers that day, they didn't deserve mercy. They, didn't, they, they were sent and had plans to capture Elisha and to try to attack the army of Israel. But mercy is exactly what each of those soldiers got that day. You see, Elisha basically told the king that he should not take credit for what God alone had done. You see, because it was God who blinded that army that was coming down the hill towards Elisha. It was God who then gave them back their sight as they entered into the city of Samaria. It was God who told the prophet Elisha what he was to say to the king of Israel to protect him from walking into a trap. It was all God. And it's a small picture, I think, of the mercy that God gives to every one of us who are willing to receive it. You see, our God is a very merciful God, and he wants to have mercy even upon his enemies. And I, I know that we, may be, we maybe never thought of ourselves as enemies of, of God, but the Bible tells us very clearly that we were enemies of God because of our sin that separated us from God. 
You see, the Bible explains this truth to, to Christians in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 10. And there in God's word, it says this, when we were utterly hopeless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight the, by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by death, by the death of his son, while we were still his enemies, we will certainly be saved through the life of his son. Do you see how much God loves us? He loves us so much. He loved us when we were without strength. He loved, he died for us when we were ungodly. He demonstrated his love for us while we were still sinners. He reconciled us to God through the death of his son, Jesus, when we were still enemies. You see, Jesus Christ, he left the riches of heaven in order to come to earth and to die for us. He suffered and died on a cruel Roman cross. He took the punishment of our sins so that he could have mercy upon us. And now that risen Savior is offering his mercy to anyone who is willing to receive it. God will have mercy upon you today. If you will receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, he will have mercy upon you. He will forgive you of your sins, and he will give you an everlasting home in heaven. Amen? Wow, I don't know where you are today. I don't know what you're going through, what you're facing today. But I can tell you that God is willing to grant you his mercy today. I would challenge you to put your faith and your trust in God, the God who loves you and cares for you so very much. He is a God who gives us his unwavering attention. He looks after us and all of the needs that we have. He is our unseen ally in those times when we feel under attack. He is there to help protect us and to look after us in those times. And he's also a God who shows us his undeserved mercy. We don't deserve it, but he has given it to each one of us freely. Let me just say to you today, whatever you are going through in your life, you can be assured that God has got this. He's got this. Whatever, whatever you are facing today, it is not too big for God. God has got you. He's looking after you. He's caring for you. He's paying attention to you. And so let me encourage you today. Let's feed on his faith. Let's feed on what we find here in the word of God. Let's feed on this and not upon our fears. It's okay to watch the news. But the news these days is filled with so many things that bring anxiety and fear upon our lives. I would encourage you to check in on the news and see what's happening but don't dwell on it. But what I would encourage you to dwell upon is the words found in this book. Because the word of God is what is going to feed your faith. And I pray that you will feed your faith today and not your fears. Shall we pray together? Father God, I just want to thank you today for this passage of scripture. I thank you for the lessons that you teach us. And Father God, I pray today that you would be with each and every one of us no matter where we are and what we face today. I do want to take time, Father, right now to pray for our frontline workers. I pray for those men and women who are working on our behalf to uh, protect us, to look after us. Uh, Lord, I pray for the nurses and the doctors and all of those that are cleaning our hospitals and for our police and our fire and our paramedics, Lord. All of those frontline workers that do so much 
to make sure that we are cared for and protected, Lord. We pray for them today. We pray that you would strengthen them and encourage them and that you would give them all that they need to face what they're going through right now. Father God, I do pray also for uh, those in our fellowship that may not be well today, that are struggling. God, would you come alongside and bring healing to their bodies today? Father, I thank you for all that you teach us. And I pray that as we continue to feed upon our faith by reading the word of God, that you would just teach us new things each and every day. God, help us to feed our faith and not our fears. We love you today, Father. Thank you for this time together. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. <laughs>
I just want you to know that you're in our prayers, and I invite you again to join us on Wednesday evening for our prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. As you go with him this week, may you take the peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ with you wherever you go. God bless you. Have a great day.